Number one, he built the mosque, the center. Number two, Muahat, Bain al Muhajirin wal Ansar. One from the Muhajirin, one from Ansar declared brothers. So that these two sections are welded together in this society. They don't remain separate. That would create problems. Number three, he concluded agreements with the three Jewish tribes, Misakul Madina. The essence of this Misakul Madina was a joint defense of Madina. If somebody attacks Madina, we shall defend as one Ummah. The Muslims and the Jews. From the very seventh month, he started sending expeditions, groups, to challenge Quraysh. That was the initiation from the side of Muhammad There was no initiation of any activity against the Muslims after Hijrah from the people of Mecca. There was an argument going on over there. There were people, hawks, who were proposing that we should go and attack Medina and, and finish Muhammad and his companions, once for all. But there were others also. Abu Jahl, Uqba ibn Abdi Mu'ayyad, Nadr ibn Haris, these were the hawks. But then Uqba ibn Rabia, Hakim ibn Hizam, who, who later on became a Muslim also, he was a close relation of Hazrat Khadiyah radiallahu ta'ala anha. These were there, they were the hawk, they were the doves. They said, why? They have gone from here. Why should we pursue them? Now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, well, he will, is not going to sit there idle. He will preach his deen over there. So then there will be a strife between him and the other tribes of the Arabia. So if he can subdue the, all the tribes of Arabia. Do we lose anything? Who is Muhammad? Our brother? He's a Tarshi. It means a Tarshi empire will come there in the whole of Arabia. We stand to lose nothing. And if the other Arabs finish with him, okay, that's what you want will happen without you yourself soiling your swords with the blood of your brothers. After all, they are your brothers. Who is Muhammad? Son of Abdullah. Son of Abdul Muttalib. Who is Abu Bakr? Who is Umar? Who is Hamza? Who is all these things? Who are they? Muslims. They are Farshis. But you know, the initiative was taken by Muhammad sallallahu himself. But there were Munafiqeen in Medina. They were criticizing Muhammad sallallahu As yet there has not come any clear commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to war against this kuffar. Why has he started it? Actually they didn't want to go to war. If you go to war, you have to risk your life. If you come back alive, well it's a bonus. When you go, you have to risk your life. So these people were criticizing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, no, there's no express ayah has up till now come, commanding us to go to war against these people. So why has he started it? In that background, because now Ghazwatul Badr, the battle of Badr was coming. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing the Muslims for this confrontation, the first armed conflict between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions on the one side, both the Muhajirin and the Ansar and the people of Mecca at the other side. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alladheena kafaru. Now the style of this surah is also very peculiar. There is no other example in the whole of Quran. Starting directly, then every ayah ending directly. Mostly you find, وَهُوَ الْقَفُرُ rahim وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ hakim Ayat end with the names or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you won't, won't, won't find this thing here. In the whole surah. It's one style. Alladheena kafaru wa saddu an sabirillahi awallah amalahu. Those who disbelieved and they bar others also, prevent others also 
from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will render all their deeds fruitless. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتُ On the contrary, those who came to believe and they did good deeds, righteous deeds, وَآمَنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ And they came to believe on what was sent down on Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ And that is the truth from their Lord. كَفَّرْ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّعَاتِهِمْ He will expiate their sins وَأَصْلَحَ بَعَلَهُمْ And he will set a right their conditions. ذَالِكَ بِأَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرْ تَمُرْ بَعْتِرَ This is because those who disbelieved, they followed falsehood. وَأَنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تَبْعُوا الْحَقَّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ And on the contrary, those who have come to believe, they have followed the truth from their Lord. كَذَلِكَ يَذِبُ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ يَمْسَالَهُمْ In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strikes for people their similitudes. فَإِذَا لَقِيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا This ayah number four is one of the difficult ayat of the Qur'an. At the same time, one of the most important ayat of the Qur'an. In this one ayat, there is a full law for this new phase of the struggle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, armed conflict. Before that, no battle, no fighting had actually happened. Although eight expeditions before Badr, in four of them, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself participated. They are called Ghazawat. And four in which he didn't go, he sent the people. They are called Saraya. But, you know, actual fighting didn't take place. This was the first occasion. And for that now, this law is being given. فَإِذَا لَقِيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا O Muslims, when you meet those who are disbelieved in battle, فَزَرْبَ الرِّقَاب So smite their necks, necks. Kill them. Hatta idha askhantumuhum. Until when you have routed them completely. Fashuddul masawak. Then tie them fast. As slaves. Or prisoners. Fa imma mannan baadu wa imma fidaan. Later on. Any of the two ways can be taken.